is with us to kick things off. I got his newsletter this morning. Uh, the Daily Poster is uh, what it's called. And uh, that's also the, the website, dailyposter.com. And of course, David's Twitter handle is David Sirota. Um, and and I just, uh, it was a jaw dropper. Uh, David, welcome to the program, first of all. And thanks so much for dropping by this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Tom. So I'm, I'm reading your newsletter, and I had no idea that 11 years ago, arguably 12 years ago, in 2009, Connecticut basically passed a law to establish a public option. And, and giant health insurance companies, uh, with United Healthcare at the top of the list, have done everything they can to prevent that from being implemented. Tell me about this. Yeah, so 11 years ago, uh, after the passage of the Affordable Care Act, Connecticut uh, created a, a, a pathway to create a public option in its own state. If you remember, back then, uh, the, the Congress did not pass a national federal public option, so states started going to work, Connecticut being one of them. Now, you might say Connecticut would be a, a weird place to go to work for, it, uh, work for one only because the insurance industry itself uh, much of it is uh, rooted in Connecticut, but you know what? People live in Connecticut, and people don't like paying uh, high health insurance premiums. Of course, the insurance industry is powerful in Connecticut, and it has managed to use its political power in the state to stop a public option. The health care crisis has gotten worse. Now legislators have bought, brought up another uh, public option proposal. And what we reported at DailyPoster.com is that there is video of United Health's uh, top executives uh, pressuring their rank and file workers, their rank and file employees, to lobby legislators in the state to kill the public option proposal that is moving uh, through that state's legislature. And the argument against it from United Health uh, boils down to that a public option could lower premiums. I mean, literally, the executive on the video <laughs> says um, it would be art of, you know, the premiums in the public option plan would be artificially low premiums. Now, there's a debate about what, what the word artificially means. That word's doing a lot of work. But the point is, is that United Health. Uh, has been making record profits uh, during the pandemic. It has been pushing, at the same time, Connecticut regulators to approve premium increases, big premium increases in the state. And then it is telling its employees uh, to go into their communities, get on the phones, uh, and pressure lawmakers uh, to kill a public option. This is just mind-boggling. It's also a, a great example of why big companies don't want unions. Because this, you know, if United Healthcare was unionized, I suspect the response of the employees would be a whole different thing. What kind of response have they gotten so far? I, you know, I read in your article that they, that we've got the, uh, the there's this national lobbying group for the big health insurance companies. Now they've created state-based lobbying groups. There's one in Connecticut. And they actually have thousands of members that they've suckered in. Are these just employees or, or ha are they just bringing in the MAGA crowd now or something? Well, so United, United Healthcare made reference to other insurance companies doing the same thing. And your point about the national groups, there's a group called the Partnership. Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, it, it's basically called the Partnership. That's what it's referred to as. But it has state chapters. Uh, in which it is trying to stop the public option. There's a federal group that has been trying to stop the public option, and their message uh, has been uh, that we should uh, basically not uh, change the, the Obamacare. We should not build off of really Obamacare. We should not expand uh, 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 into uh, expanding Medicaid or going to single payer. In fact, in the Connecticut video, uh, the United Healthcare executive says they see the public option as a stepping stone to single payer. And the Partnership for America's Healthcare right. Future, which is that front group, uh, they have made the same argument. And what's really disturbing here, Tom, is that this is not, you know, this doesn't break down along party lines. The Partnership for America's Healthcare Future uh, is run uh, by a former top uh, Hillary Clinton aide. Uh, it is uh, one of the, the, the lobbying firm that works works with in D.C. Uh, is a lot of former Democratic officials. So people need to understand that this fight, especially with the health insurance companies, I mean, it really does transcend uh, party. It really is kind well, of. This is like Joe Lieberman back in the day. 
I mean, Joe Lieberman was the guy who killed the public option in the national bill, and he was the senator from Connecticut. Surprise, surprise. That's right. And the reason Connecticut's important in this fight over, over a public option, which it should be said is no replacement for Medicare for all, but, but the insurance industry sees it as a stepping stone for Medicare for all. The reason Connecticut is so important is because the industry also sees it, sees the idea that if they lose in the home of the insurance industry, on something like this. It will send a message to legislators in other states that don't have as big a health insurance industry headquartered in the state. It will send a message to them that go for it. Yeah. So we have the, um, uh, the Connecticut Health Connecticut's Healthcare Future. That's the uh, the local group. It's part of the Partnership for America's Healthcare Future Action, uh, which right. I, I'm assuming is a uh, you know a lobbying group or a PAC or whatever they call them, and 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 promoting this. So we've got you know uh, I, I, oh and you also pointed out in the article that uh, United Healthcare just had their most profitable quarter ever. I think it was. Yeah. I, you know, I, I highlighted yeah. it here. I'm, I've highlighted so many things in your article. It's hard to, hard to find. Yeah, they showed $15 billion in profit last year. I mean, billion. Their CEO took $50 million. This, let's keep in mind, this is the company that paid Dollar Bill McGuire $1.6 billion in compensation as CEO. And he had to give back $300 million of it because, because the federal government was alleging fraud. Um, uh, this is also one of the companies that most aggressively is promoting the Medicare Advantage scam, largely through um, uh, AARP and whatnot. So we've got this huge, I mean, this multi-billion dollar company with massive profits. You've got front groups that are very, very well funded. Who's the opposition? Who is going up against these guys? Who, what groups or what people... Uh, you know, what are the pressure points? Who can we shout out to? Who can we call out to? Uh, what can we do to help the good citizens of Connecticut have a single payer program, David? Well, sure. Uh, the person who's leading the battle in, in, in the government is Kevin Lembo in Connecticut, the, the comptroller. The plan is basically to uh, open up uh, some of the, the same uh, offerings that are offered to state government uh, employees to basically may, to allow people to get into parts of that plan. Uh, so Kevin Lembo, uh, the state comptroller there, uh, is leading that battle. Uh, there's the Universal Health Care Foundation of, of Connecticut that's, that's basically been leading this uh, forever. So, I mean, it's basically, you know, the grassroots progressive infrastructure in Connecticut uh, that was, frankly, part of the, the Ned Lamont campaign. I mean, I worked on the Ned Lamont campaign uh, back in 2006 mm -hmm. against Joe Lieberman. I mean, and Ned Lamont now is governor. And it should be said, you know, Ned Lamont uh, has actually uh, opposed pieces of the existing plan in the legislature, but he has his own plan. And it should be said that the health insurance industry uh, is opposing all of it. The health insurance industry doesn't want right. any of it. So I would say this, the fact that the bill has been moving through the legislature means that there is real grassroots support for it, that legislators, individual legislators, I mean, if you're in Connecticut, call your individual legislator and tell them you want them to stand up against this kind of thing. Uh, tell them you want this. I mean, that's where this is coming from.